Hi, in this clip we will discuss an important class of random variables and it is called binomial random variables. Okay, so let's start with some example. Okay, so we have a fair coins and we flip it for 10 times independently and let x be the number of heads. So x is the random variable. So we like to compute the probability that x equals i. That is the probability that out of 10 coin tosses you get exactly uh, i heads okay so if i is, is free then uh, it's gonna look like this one possible outcome will look like uh, this okay and this outcome occur with what's the probability that this outcome occurs since uh, these coitosis are you know are done independently so the probability that you get all this uh, uh, this exactly this outcome is is one half to the tenth right because because each uh, coin toss occur with probably one one half and they are independent okay and this is true for for any combination of the uh, heads and tails right because it's a fair coin okay now um, to compute the probability that you get exactly i heads uh, you need to uh, look at all possible outcomes in this in this form right that contains i heads and how many of them do we have so there are 10 coins right and i of them has to turn up head right and this happens with probabilities because each outcome happens uh, with the same probabilities so it's going to be one half to the tenth okay so that's the the this probability that we need to compute okay so let's look at another example and and we have done this before when we talk about the balls and bins okay so um, so let y be the number of balls in bin 1 um, after we we've thrown n balls into n bins okay so what's the probability that uh, y, y equals i so how of Again, so out of n balls, we have to pick n, n balls that would go to bin 1, right? And for these balls, it has to pick bin 1, right? So this happened with each ball has n choices, but it has to pick bin 1, so it left it is left with one choice. So it, this ha happened with i times, right? And the rest of the balls, they have n minus 1 choices out of n. They have they cannot pick one bin one right and there are n minus i balls out there so this is the this distrib probability distribution of random variable y okay so if you look carefully um they looked uh, the previous example and this one they 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 both contain this uh, binomial co coefficient and they are they look pretty much the same and so um and and they occur very frequently, so we give it a name. So we call it the binomial random variable. Okay. So um, suppose that we put, it is associated with this experiment. So suppose that we perform an independent trial, and each trial has success probability of p. Okay. So if we let a random variable x be the number of success trials. Um, then uh, successful trials. Um, this random variable is called the binomial random variable with parameter n and p. Okay, so n is the number of trials, p is the success probability. Okay, and uh, there's another case, special case of ran uh, binomial random variable where you only perform a single trial. Okay, so this is sometimes uh, usually called a, a Bernoulli random variables from the name of uh, uh, Bernoulli who, who is the pioneer in theory of probability. Okay, so with this uh, we can pretty easily uh, compute the expected value of x, right, because you have only one trial so x is either 1 or 0, right. If it's successful in the first trial it gets to 1, if it's not then it's 0. So the expected value of x is just because x is clearly an indicator random variable, so it's it's p1, p of x equals 1. 
and this is P. Right? And the variance, we have already computed the variance of the indicator and not variable, and it is uh, this P minus 1, P times 1 minus P. Okay, so we have done this, we have done this. Okay, so, um, all right. So now, for binomial random variables, we would like to compute uh, or figure out these uh, things. One is the distribution of the uh, binomial random variables. Okay, so you have to plot the graph later on in, in class, but we will try to analytically uh, figure out this. And we, we have to compute the expectation. And this, again, you have already did that, hopefully, in the exercise. And also the variance. Okay, but today we're gonna look at another way to compute the variance. I think you've done it with uh, by the expansion of the the product of the the sum, right? In the exercise. Okay, okay. Um, so the PMF is is as we have already uh, discussed. Um, so if X is binomial random variable with parameter n and p, so it is like we perform in experiment. And we would like to know when, so the probability that x equals i, right? So out of n experiment, you have to pick, you have to pick i, pick i. And for those outcome, right? So for each outcome, it looks like you have i, i trials, which is successful, which are successful, and then you have n minus i, which are uh, unsuccessful okay and this occur with probabilities so for those i guys has to be successful so it occur with this probability for the rest has to fail they have to fail so it's ha happened with this probability and they are in minus i of, of this so this is the probability of a single outcome that uh, belong to this uh, event and how many outcomes are there Okay, so you have n trials, and you have to pick i trials that would be successful. Okay, so there are this many outcome, and each outcome happens with this probability. So we get that this is the the this the PMF, the probability that x being one. So it's n choose i, p to the i, and i minus p to the n minus i okay right so let's compute the expected value of the binomial random variable so you, I think you have done that right so um, so the way you did it is to define you can either you can derive the thing from the the, the direct definition of the expectation but it will be kind of messy but you can define xi to be 1 if the i trial is successful and zero otherwise okay, and you know that x equals the sum of the xi right and you can use a uh, linear linear expectation and get thing done right should it's the exercise, so you should complete it, and you get that this is n times p. All right, um, and finally the variance. Um, the, from the exercise last week, I hope that you have concluded this. Okay, you the way you did it is to uh, compute to expand the uh, random variable x to the sum of x i, and then uh, do some calculation, and you get the square term, right? The terms that look like this, right, and the cross term like that, and then you compute everything, and then you get this. Okay, but uh, today we'll look at another way to compute this. Okay, so so we 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 we'll use the another important fact about variance. Okay, and um um. For the variance, if x and y are independent random variables, this is not true for any pair of random variables, but only true when they are independent. So if they are independent, the variance of x plus y 
equals the variance of x plus the variance of y. Okay, so again, very important. This is true only when when x and y are independent. Okay, not true in in general case. We we're gonna prove it pretty soon, but today we're gonna use it now. Um, so we let's uh, we haven't defined when we are gonna call that two random variables are independent. But the idea is that uh, knowing the value of x is gon is not gonna ha have any effects on the probability that uh, y being some some value, right? So it's 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 so the definition is this. So basically, uh, you look at all possible events related to x, right, and another events related to y. So x being one or being i, and y being j, and then uh, it has to equal this factor. So if you do some calculations, so if if uh, say probability of x being i is non-zero. So you you're gonna get that uh, you divide everything by uh, uh, x i right. So you're gonna get that the probability that x equals i, y equals j, over probability that x equals i. This is equals to probability of y equals j. But this is what is this? So this is the probability that y equals j given that x equals i that is uh, if uh, you you know that x equals i doesn't have any effect on the probability that y being j and this ha it has to be true for any value of i and j okay so that's the def definition of random variables uh, independent random variables and if you have more than two random variables then it's ki it's the same as the previous uh uh, case so any uh, subset of random variables has no effects on another subset of random variables. Okay, so let's compute the variance of the binomial random variables. So again, let's define xi to be 1 if the i trial is successful and zero otherwise okay so we have that x equals the sum of xi from 1 to n and this xi are clearly independent right because we perform an independent trial so from the previous uh, uh, Definite uh, formula, so we know that the variance of x is because it's the sum of the smaller random variables which are independent. So it's basically the variance of the sum of the variance of xi. But what exactly this xi? Okay, so this xi is indicator random variable and it, it's a Bernoulli. Random variable. Right, so what's the variance of these guys? So um, it's x i is one with probability p, and it's zero with probability one minus p. So so from the previous discussion, we know that this is p times one minus p, and there are n of them, right? So you get this to be n p times one minus p, as required. So that's the pretty easy way to show that. The, uh, the to show the variance of a uh, uh, binomial random variables, but you know the hard part is is this. Okay, and we we're gonna prove it uh, sometime later on. All right, so that's that's it for this part.